I'm Jenna Wortham, and I'm a tech reporter for the New York Times, which means I spend a disproportionate amount of time on the internet looking up new things that I want to write about. And my favorite thing this year has been a spam account called Horse Ebooks that tries to get you to buy really crappy um, ebooks about horses. So spam accounts or spam bots are the scourge of the internet. They follow you on Twitter um, and other places, and they clutter up your feed with junk and try to get you to click on links to make random people in weird places money. And they're really annoying, and we hate them. Um, but Horse Ebooks is very different because it uses an algorithm to pull snippets of text from the ebooks it wants to sell you to create these weird strings of text that it publishes randomly. So you get things like this, be ready to turn some heads at the next speech outing or poolside gathering. You'll be totally excited to show off your site light. You're about to discover a career opportunity where you will never get laid or be laid. So, you know, it wasn't long before it kind of began to accrue a strange um, cult following and people were really... Um, inspired by this. But the thing that's interesting about horse ebooks is that it's terrible at its job. Its sole purpose is to get you to buy these horse ebooks about adopting a horse. But no one does that. And it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't follow people or tweet at them who talk about ponies or it doesn't follow famous equestrians. It kind of lives on its own and does its own thing. Um, it sort of like very quietly lives on the web. And so there's almost this strange Darwinism happening where it's so, the reason it survives, the reason that Twitter doesn't flag this as a spam account is because it doesn't tweet at people and try to get them to click on, click on links. And most of the tweets look like this. They're often really funny. Um, about every 12th tweet or so includes a link to a site, either an affiliate site or one of these ebooks. Um, so it's pretty, it's pretty docile in terms of spam accounts. It's often poignant. <laughs> tweets little things. This one came out a few days ago. It was very sweet to see it sandwiched between my news alerts and tweets about where people were having lunch. Um, so after a while, um, let's see the next one. Okay, so. Um, horse ebooks started around. Um, well, it first got a lot of attention. Um, it first got its first attention. Uh, its first mention came in, um, around April, and people first started noticing it, and it got a lot of attention in MetaFilter, the New York Times, BuzzFeed, a couple places, and it sort of culminated in everyone wanting to know, you know, who is horse ebooks and what is horse ebooks and who runs it. There was a campaign on Tumblr to raise money to try to figure out who this guy was. Can we get someone to who can sleuth it out and figure out what's going on? Um, and there was some sort of reverse DNS lookups going on, some who is, some basic web searches, and people discovered, and John Hendren, uh, aka at Fart, was one of the first to discover that there was this guy in Russia named Alexei who appeared to be behind this account. So, a couple of web searches later, uh, we found a web address or, you know, an actual address for this guy, Alexei, and me, along with many other people, um, tried to understand kind of where this was. Did we have anyone who could go and actually knock on the door and find this guy? Um, and basically the address, 11 Linnea, is it's like saying you live at one Main Street. It's impossible. It's, it's not a real address. Um, but what we do know is that Alexi appears to run hundreds of these kinds of accounts, action ebooks, which is one of my favorites, mystery ebooks, lawyer ebooks. A lot have been shut down. Um, but horse ebooks remains the most popular with 40,000 followers. And it's still up and running, even though it's gotten a lot of attention. And it was named the best Twitter account of 2011, above Justin Bieber, Louis C.K., and other notable people on Twitter. Um, but what so started to happen is that horse ebooks began to spawn this really interesting ecosystem around basically gibberish, and people started drawing comics based on the things. This is a really funny one by Burton um, Durand. It's riffing on this tweet about, now you too can kiss hair. Um, there's a strange horse ebooks fanfic account that's like a slash between a Saw movie and like late night Skinamax show. It's very dark and erotic and weird. And um, it's, I encourage you to look at it if you're interested. It's very bizarre and very, very strange. Um, people even started to question whether or not we were being made fun of if the joke was on us because some of the tweets seemed self-aware. After a while, this one came out that said, you're the best, I'm all fired up now, I've been doing this for years, and it has to be something. Um, so there was this whole weird, you know, strange conspiracy theory about whether or not it was actually self-aware. Um, but for the most part, people didn't care. People started making more things around the Horsey Books account. This is a necklace a woman sells on the internet. It uses, it's stamped with tweets from Horsey Book accounts. Um, this is a bookmarklet where you can turn any website. This is my Facebook account rendered in Horsey Book speak, which I love. Experts eat those inner blocks. That's my personal favorite. Um, but I think what was most remarkable about horse ebooks, and I mean, it's, we still don't know who runs it. We don't know what's going to happen to it. We just know that it, lists, it, it lives, and it became this sort of blank, weird slate that we projected all of these ideas and new narratives and, and ideas upon. Um, and so, I don't know. But 
you know, it lives, it's interesting, and you should check it out. And it's just a very bizarre little piece of the web. So, yeah.